Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smalter Jannah. A lot's been going on the last couple of days. I think we need to have a look and do a bit of the old analysis. Smarter to Jannah. <laughs> Alright, so apparently they finally found a picture of a black hole. They're saying it's the first ever picture that we have of the black hole. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on a minute. So what the hell have you guys been showing me for the last 20 years? I don't know about you guys, but it seems hella blurry, no? It's the sort of blurry that the media uses when it's trying to hide someone's identity. I'm afraid we can't disclose his identity for legal reasons. Bonjour. What else has been going on? The debate between Muhammad Hijab and some random atheist I've never heard of. Now I watched most of the debate and of course, Muhammad Hijab smashed it. Why did it seem like watching the debate was a journey into the past? Writing on the blackboards again. Of it. Watching cassettes. Like I saw in one of his tapes, he tried to say- I don't know about you, but he reminds me of a really boring professor that I had at uni. If consciousness could exist apart from the brain, Next story, this is the father who lost his children in a vile Islamophobic attack. Now he was called as a witness to hate crimes and white nationalism, which is commendable, respectable. Then what these weirdos started doing was getting him to defend his own faith. When my two daughters Yusuf and Razan and my son-in-law Dia were shot to death execution style. Uh, sympathy for that unspeakable tragedy, but my, my brief question to you, sympathy to your family, is did you teach your children your daughter's hatred? Absolutely not uh, Congresswoman. Uh, Muslim, you are not anti, you are not filling children or those in the mosque with hate, hatefulness. Absolutely, Ms. We, we fight this actually. My deepest condolences to you on the loss of your three uh, children. Thank you sir. Does Islam teach Muslims to hate Jewish people? Absolutely not sir. I, I'm really confused when uh, the, the good doctor says that Islam does not uh, teach hatred of Jews. But I find it troubling that Mr. Klein turned this conversation into an almost an Islamophobic conversation where I'm talking about my tragedy and my loss as a Muslim. He is so cringe. How on earth can you call someone whose kids have just died and then you start cussing his faith? What's wrong with you people? I mean this is dehumanization on another level. Alright, let's move to a bit of an inspirational story now, yeah? Pope Francis. In an address he done a couple of days ago, he smashed it. He was slamming Europe for selling weapons to oppressive regimes. Why? If they didn't have weapons, they wouldn't make war. Why do they make war? Because we, the rich Europe, America, sell weapons used to kill children, to kill people. We are the ones that make a difference. Now, I'm sure he's aware of the UK where it sells weapons to 22 out of 30 countries on its own human rights watch list. Well UK and USA has sold weapons to Al Qaeda, Russia, you name it. I mean two thirds of the UK sales are to Middle Eastern countries. And then you wonder where the wars are coming from. Respect to Pope Francis for pointing out what Noam Chomsky has also pointed out before as well. Up until now it's because the Russians were coming, okay. Now it's because of the technological sophistication of third world powers, which incidentally we're trying to build up. Part of Lockheed's profits come from selling advanced jets to third world countries so that they will be a military threat requiring that we build F-22s, you know, at zillions of dollars to protect ourselves from it. And if you read Lockheed propaganda, they say it straight out. You know, so it's a dangerous world out there, it's getting even more dangerous when we're selling them upgraded F-16s. You know, and uh... Next, let's move on to vaccines. This vaccine business is going out of control. A couple of weeks ago I saw this article where in the US they raided someone's house just because the parents refused to vaccinate their child. Now New York City has apparently declared a state of emergency because people aren't vaccinating their kids. I've seen on the mainstream media, anyone who questions vaccinations is seen as a conspiracy theorist, an uneducated bum. But if you actually look at the research, it's not that clear cut. And I'd like to do a declassified podcast on that as well. Now I think state of emergency is a bit excessive. 
But it begs the question, how comes you never declare a state of emergency on suicide? Because in the US, it claims doubled the victims as homicides. How comes you don't declare a state of emergency on homelessness? Or on knife crime? And let's face it, you got cigarettes, alcohol, they kill people, but people have the choice to either take it or leave it. Why can you not do the same for vaccinations? Considering the government, I mean let's face it, they're known to lie. Why on earth would we trust them enough to let them forcibly inject us with stuff? I mean it's emerging that some vaccinations have fetal matter, you know from dead babies and mercury which is really bad for you and all sorts of nonsense. And of course it's not been a really good week for democracy, a freedom of speech. Israel had its elections. Normally people say look you cannot blame the whole country, yeah it's only a select few individuals. But Netanyahu has been voted as Prime Minister or President whatever of Israel again. Where did he get the votes from? During his term 19,000 illegal settlements have been made. On top of that when the polling was going on the guy was peeving on these people. I mean that doesn't sound very democratic to me mate. Julian Assange who's leaked loads of important information. He's been arrested by the UK police. Indian elections, BJP that racist Islamophobic party is set to win again. A lot of madness is going on, a lot of madness is going on. Also I'm sure you guys have heard Nipsey Hussle the rapper he passed away. What was very interesting was he wanted to release a documentary on Dr Sebi. Now Dr Sebi had a cure to many of the incurable diseases such as AIDS and he was actually asked to prove it in court and he was able to successfully defend his case. This was a very interesting case, definitely do check it out Dr Sebi. Until next time, Salaamu Alaikum.